here's one that I think is far more important and significant and consequential than the league would ever admit. And I have been pressing the league for something, some clarification on an aspect of the gambling policy that has been completely overlooked. And pardon me while I multitask here. I'm checking to see whether or not the league got back to me. I informed them that I was planning to talk about it at a podcast taping at 11 a.m. Eastern. I asked them again. I repeated my request from yesterday for some clarification. Section five of the NFL's gambling policy. NFL personnel, and that is broadly defined to include everyone that works for the league or the teams, with the exception of the people who sell beer and programs and take tickets on game day. But for our purposes, it's all the people that that affect the game, the players, the coaches, executives, et cetera, people working for the league office, people on NFL Network. NFL personnel may not accept a complimentary room, service, or other gift from a gambling entity if its value exceeds $250. Any items accepted other than de minimis food and beverages generally offered to all patrons must be appropriately documented and verifiable upon request. Soliciting gifts of any value is never permissible. I don't know what that means. And this is a clear example of why I say the NFL's gambling policy reads like it was written by lawyers for lawyers. Non-lawyers don't use the phrase de minimis. That's Latin. Non-lawyers don't use Latin. The presence of the term de minimis in the gambling policy means they should tear the whole thing up and rewrite it, as multiple teams have done, to make it understandable to their staff, to their players, to anyone who would have to understand it. I don't know what this prohibits. I don't know what this permits specifically. I need examples because ultimately what I need to know is where's the line? What does it mean to accept a complimentary room service or other gift from a gambling entity if the value exceeds $250? And apparently if it's less than 250, but it's more than de minimis, which means just basically here, here's the hors d'oeuvre tray or here's a here's a beer or whatever. And it's available to everyone at a casino, a sports book, whatever, at times when NFL personnel are allowed to enter. You've got to document it and verify it on request. Which seems odd. The whole thing seems odd. The whole thing seems confusing. And. Here's the problem. I thought of this because I remembered seeing something like it when I saw Michael Rubin, the CEO of Fanatics, a growing sports book presence. Rubin's trying to take over the sports world, and that's his prerogative. He's gone from apparel into other things. They bought, I think, Topps Trading Card Company. They want to be one stop for sports fans, for everything, and more power to him. Great aspiration. Take over the world. That's fine. But when you're going to start a sports book, and they already have a sports book, and Michael Rubin is the person ultimately in charge of the company that has the sports book, you're going to keep doing a July 4 party with an exclusive guest list featuring NFL players like Odo Beckham Jr., Joe Burrow, C.J. Stroud, Devontae Adams, owners like Robert Kraft, If you're going to have NFL personnel at a party thrown by a CEO of a company that is trying to be one of the leading sports books in the country, and it's this very swanky, lavish, extravagant, look at all the great time we're having, and please go feel bad about the shitty time you had on July 4th. If they're going to do that, Where is the line between de minimis, food and beverage, and de maximis, something that violates the policy? And will the league eventually identify the line and apply it? 
what happens if the league realizes, you know what, that policy probably applies to this party. That party probably goes too far. What would they do about that? See, they can do whatever they want. And because an owner is caught up in this one, look for them to do nothing. But this just speaks to the overall confusion, inconsistency, and hypocrisy of the rule. And I saw a couple of people on Twitter say I was snitching. And that, that's low-hanging fruit. Folks, the rule is in place. D don't some of these guys who've been suspended this year wish someone had snitched when there were examples of violations in the past and explained the rule and sought out clarity from the league so people would know what the rules are and what they aren't? That's all I'm trying to do. You got a rule on the books. A section of this eight-page policy that players didn't understand for an extended period of time. They now understand it's there. I don't know that they still understand exactly what it means, what it prohibits, what it allows, and why, because it sees the the league making millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions from these sports book sponsorships. If you're going to have this policy, it's got to mean something. There's got to be a line. Where's the line? Give me an example of what crosses the line. The rule book has a case book with examples of things that violate a rule or comply with the rule. What are the examples? Where are the examples? Will there ever be examples of what it takes to violate this provision? And what did the people who showed up at the swanky, exclusive, extravagant Michael Rubin party get? They have gift bags, swag bag, get some shoes, get some gear. Hope it was less than $250. And I'm waiting to see how the NFL tries to tie itself in knots to excuse whatever it was. See, that, that's the difference. And I'm getting back to my point. Because an owner is involved in this, I guarantee you, they're going to find a way to say whatever happened was fine. They'll come up with some excuse. Well, fanatics didn't throw the party. Michael Rubin did. I bet you fanatics paid for it. I bet you it's a write-off for fanatics. And if it's not, Rubin's not nearly as good of a businessman as I thought. Because if, if a dumbass like me can figure out when you have people over to your house for a work-related event, you make your company pay for it. I hope I'm not admitting to any, <laughs> any potential tax issues. But I think it's perfectly legitimate when you're having an event where you are entertaining people you work with. And the whole purpose of the thing is to advance your brand. And, and it, when I have people here from NBC, we talk about business. And so it is a proper write-off. I, I, don't, I don't really want to be audited. But my point is this. When it came to players violating the gambling policy, it was shoot first and never ask questions. It was, we've got you, and this is what we're going to do. And if you fight it, it's only going to be worse. That was the general message. With this, the saving grace was the presence of Robert Kraft. Because the NFL is not going to do anything about this. And if, if the NFL does anything, it'll be to say, well, we've clarified the policy. And for future reference, now that Michael Rubin has a sports book, you know, in the past it was fine. But now that he has a sports book under the Fanatics umbrella, this is something that in the future we would suggest that players and owners don't attend. If they even go that far. I think it will be something that they choose to ignore. And I know that because what, what was the reaction when I asked them about it? Crickets. And I asked them about something else yesterday and they responded. Same person. Same person. I'll get to that coming up. So... It's not that I'm on the pay no mind list. They put me on the selective pay no mind list when they just don't want to deal with the question that I've asked. And it is such a low tech way to try to avoid someone. And the problem is sometimes it works because what happens is I'll ask once and I go back about my business. And if I remember the next day or the day after that they didn't respond, I'll ask again and I'll go back about my business. And I'm forced to remember the next day or the day after that they haven't responded. So eventually I ask again. And usually the third time is a charm. 
it either gets me a real answer or a no comment. I'm going to keep on this one because I think they know that these words written by lawyers for lawyers are potentially being violated by players and one owner by attending this 4th of July party that you know it when you see it. Whatever you call it, having a ticket to this party and eating whatever you ate and drinking whatever you drank and being entertained by whoever was there and the fireworks display that was private for the $50 million home on the Hamptons where Michael Rubin had the party, whatever it is, it's on the wrong side of this. It, it doesn't mesh with the spirit of a rule that says NFL personnel may not accept the complimentary room service or other gift from a gambling entity if its value exceeds $250. Whatever those folks got, on Tuesday, you couldn't buy for $250. I'm not going to hold my breath or any other involuntary bodily function, frankly, as I wait for an answer from the NFL, but I'm going to keep pressing. People deserve to know what the rules are. The players deserve to know what the rules are. Everyone needs to know what they are. If this kind of clarity had been available two years ago, maybe the 10 guys who have been suspended since 2021 wouldn't have been. And if the NFL is going to have this policy, and if the NFL is going to profit from gambling, somebody needs to be saying, hey, folks, what are you doing here? What do these rules mean? Why do you have these rules? How do they apply? Who's violating? Who's not? Are you, are you aggressively investigating and enforcing? Or are you just sitting there waiting for the easiest, and this is a point I've made in the past, the easiest violations to fall out of the sky because the sports books are ratting out the players. That's an interesting concept. Players who went to Michael Rubin's party are at risk of being ratted out by Michael Rubin's company to the NFL if they happen to use their cell phone device to bet on NFL football or an NFL event or, or more importantly, to bet on other sports where it's legal to do so if they're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.